wondering, what about these guys here? You've conveniently skipped over them. Yes, I did. These are, as you already know, the transition metals. Now, the transition metals have varying valencies and form varying charges. So we're going to learn the most common ones. And we're going to start with silver. And silver has a charge of plus 1. So silver is plus 1. Now, we are going to learn four multivalent transition metals. Multivalent means it has different valences depending on its bond. So we're going to talk about copper, iron, lead, which is actually sitting over here in group 14, which I said would probably ignore, and now we're not ignoring, and tin also. Okay. So the valences or the charges for these atoms will often be provided for you by your teacher. All right, so copper can be plus one or copper can be plus two. Iron can be plus two or iron can be plus three. Lead can be plus two or lead can be plus four and tin can be plus 2 or 10 can be plus 4. So those are the common multivalent ions and then we threw in silver even though it's not multivalent it's important to understand that it's got a plus 1 charge. Those are the most common ones. Now how do we designate what their charge is? Well we designate their charge with a Roman numeral. Let's start with some examples where you're given the formula and you're told to name the compound. And we're going to start right here with PbCl2. Now you saw over here that Pb in group 14 can either have a plus 4 or a plus 2 valence charge. So what are we going to do? How do we know what its charge is over here? Well, it lands up being quite simple. We know that Cl is in group 17, and all elements in group 17 have a minus 1 charge. And we know that there's two Cls, because the formula they gave us has two Cls, so the total charge on the Cl is minus 2, so the total charge on the Pb has to be plus 2. So what did we do? We simply used the charge on the one that is a univalent charge or the one that only has one possible charge. There's two of them. Two minus ones makes minus two. And this is a compound we were given. If the Cl adds up to minus two, the Pb has to be plus two. So we can't just name it lead chloride, though, because there's more than one type of lead chloride. So we would name it lead Roman numeral 2, which indicates that plus 2 charge chloride, I-D-E ending, lead to chloride. So let's look at the next one. In the next one, we have PbCl4. Now I'm using Cls for all of these, just for ease to explain the use of the Roman numeral. Later, we'll do examples with more elements. Now, once again, here we have Cl. Cl has a minus 1 charge. Why? Because Cl is in group 17, and everyone in group 17 has a minus 1 charge. But there's four of them. So minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1 makes minus 4. That means this Pb is the plus 4, lead plus 4. So how are we going to name it? We're going to call it lead for chloride, IDE ending, Roman numeral right here simply indicates that this lead has a plus 4 charge. So let's go through and let's try name the rest of these. Okay, two chlorines minus 2 plus 2, so this is my iron 2 chloride. Alright, what about this one? Minus 1, there's 3 of them, so minus 3 plus 3, iron 3, chloride. How about this one? Minus 1 plus 1, oh, copper 1, chloride. How about this one? Minus 1, minus 1, which is minus 2, so this one has to be plus 2, copper 
to chloride. And you can see it becomes very easy. What you must not do though, however, is now go start putting Roman numerals next to everything. Just use your Roman numerals for, for the multivalent compounds. But you're like, what if the teacher just gives me this? Lead to chloride. How do I know if I'm gonna call it PBCL2 or PBCL4? Well, let's look at it. This means lead plus two. Chlorine is in group 17 and is minus one. Oh, I would need two of these. So it's gonna be lead chloride. All right, lead four, four chloride, that means PB plus four. Now it's telling you the charge, it's given to you. That means I would need four of these guys. So it would be lead chlorine four. Now students are gonna come through and go, oh, I get it, if this is a four, then this is a four. No, 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 it just works out this way because chlorine has a minus one charge. So let's use another example now. So what if I gave you a compound and I said it is lead two oxide? What does that mean? Lead is Pb plus two. Oxygen is in group 16 and is always minus two. So the formula is gonna be PbO, lead two oxide. What if it was lead four oxide? lead four oxide, well the charges are plus four, minus two, oops, I need another minus two, and that balances to zero, so it's gonna be PBO2. So you have to be very methodical and careful about these. Okay, I want you to practice these four on your own, one, two, three, four. If I give you the formula, write the name. If I give you the name, write the formula. Pause the video and do it yourself. Okay, so let's look at the first one. Iron three sulfide. Iron is Fe plus three. Why? Because they told us. Sulfide is sulfur. It's in group 16, so it has a minus two charge. So S minus two. Okay, so that means I need two irons and three sulfurs to give me plus six minus six, so it's going to be Fe2S3. This is one of those examples where you could have easily done the switcheroo, put a two here and a three there, and that's what you get. Remember, you can always use that method, just remember to reduce it to the lowest whole number if you're using that. For the next one, Fen, in this case, nitrogen here, is in group 15 and we know that anything in group 15 has a minus three charge they only gave us one of each so if nitrogen is minus three iron has got to be plus three so this thing is going to be named iron three nitride nitrogen becomes ide nitride so you're thinking of all the things you're like oh iron is multivalent so i need therefore a charge to show what the charge is, and I'm giving it my IDE ending. Let's move on to tin two oxide. Tin has a plus two charge. Oxygen is over here in group 16, so it has a minus two charge, and the charges all already balance out to zero, so it's going to be SNO. And then the last one, all right, so an SNO2, O has a minus two charge. There's two of them, so the total charge is minus four. So the charge on the SN has got to be plus four. So this is going to be 10, four oxide. Oxygen becomes IDE. The 10 is the metal. It's a multivalent metal. So therefore it has a Roman numeral four to stand for its plus four charge. So now you know how to write binary ionic compounds and you know how to write multivalent 
binary ionic compounds. Now I'm going to give you some practice where I combine the two. I want you to practice these. If you're given the compound, you write the name. If you're given the name, you write the compound. Remember, if it's multivalent, to include a Roman numeral or use the Roman numeral for the charge. All right, let's look at this first one, MgCl2. Well, Mg is in group two, so it has a plus two charge. Cl is in group one, so it has a minus one charge, and there's two of them. So of course they wrote the formula right. This is not multivalent, so all I'm going to do is write magnesium chloride. Now sometimes students get a bit excited. They're like, well, the charge on magnesium is two, so I'm gonna throw in a Roman numeral two here. No, you don't need to. Why? Because it's not multivalent. It's always going to be plus two, so don't write it there. Okay, iron three bromide. Okay, iron is plus three in this case because they're telling us, thank you. And bromine is minus one. All right, thank you. So therefore, if I have a plus three iron and a minus three bromine, I am going to need three bromines to make this thing balance out to zero. So iron three bromide is going to become FeBr3. Now I can also do this the cheat way, and I just play the switcheroo game, junk junk, and the understood one is right here. You don't show a one, and the three goes next to the Br. Calcium oxide, okay? Calcium is in group two, and calcium has a plus two charge. Oxygen is in group 16, has a minus two charge. It's already balanced, so the formula is going to be CaO. Calcium nitride. Calcium is in group two, has a plus two charge. Oxy nitrogen is in group 15 and has a minus three charge. Uh, let's play the switcheroo game. That means the three goes there and the two goes there. Ca3N2. Okay, let's look at this one. Fe2O3. Now a bell should be going off in your head. This Fe is multivalent, so we've got to figure out what its charge is. And um, we're going to figure that out from the formula. So oxygen, there's three of them. Oxygen is in group 16, and it has a minus 2 charge. But there's three of them. So there's minus 2, minus 2, minus 2, minus 6. So the total charge of Fe is plus 6, but there's two of them. So the charge on one of the Fe's is plus 3. Did you get that? Let's do it again. Let me show you my thought process. Okay. We know the charge in oxygen is minus two. There's three of them. So the total charge of the oxygens is minus six. That means for this formula, the total charge of the iron has got to be plus six. But how many irons are there? There's two of them. So one of them is plus three and the other of them is plus three. So in this case, this multivalent iron is plus three, so its name is going to be iron three oxide, and I have to include this three because its charge is plus three. All right, lots to think about. If you did not do well on this, go back and repeat this video, and the more you practice, the better you'll get.